We're rolling. We're recording. All right. Welcome to episode 51. Big week coming next week for 52 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I will be your host. And I want to start off by singing a little song. It is Twinkle, Twinkle. Well, it goes Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, How I Wonder What You... So either way, 52, we have a big week coming. Um, This season, I feel like the plane is taking off. And, you know, if you've ever been on a plane or you've ever flown, there's this moment when you're taking off the runway and the plane's gaining speed down the tarmac and then the front wheels lift off and the back wheels aren't off yet, but you just feel that plane tip back. And then once the back wheels take off, that's when you feel this incredible lift and you start gaining altitude really quickly. And I feel like as a company with Congruent, um, the message of clarity and the clarity community, I feel like the front wheels are off the ground. The back wheels haven't quite come off yet, but back to this is week 51 of the podcast. So it's been a whole year of going down the runway and a whole year of the front wheels finally feeling like they're off the ground, but I feel fantastic momentum. I feel like the message of clarity is connecting and I've, I've really resolved something in the last week because clarity is kind of this large concept and it's 30,000 feet and everyone's always telling me like, you have to bring it down, you have to bring it down. And I just, I'm just the 30,000 foot thinker by nature. So like getting down into the execution always takes a little bit of work for me. It actually takes a lot of work. And I was thinking like, what am I doing with the agency? What am I doing with the podcast? What am I doing with the social media community that I'm following? Right, we're live streaming right now. We got people, people meeting people, people connecting, people getting motivated, hopefully joining this community. So like, what am I doing with all this? And I finally found a little bit of a definition for it. I'm building a clarity machine. What does that look like? I don't know what a clarity machine looks like, but the point is we work with a lot of businesses and organizations on the agency side. I connect with a lot of individuals and people on the personal brand side and just the connection side. So what do what's the common thread between all of that stuff? It's a clarity machine. And you put things into it, right? You put your situation, you put your product into it, you put um, your relationships into this clarity machine, and you run it through, and the process is a little different every time as it filters through, but out the other end, You get clarity, you get next steps, you get self-awareness, you get growth, you get motivation, you get increased revenue, you get better marketing and branding. Like, so that's the best description I can think of it. And I think it's going to stick. I can sometimes I just tell when an idea comes and I said, this is it. So I had some clarity about clarity over this last week. Um, So. I think this week it's important to talk about some of the things in one of the books. I'm going to introduce a book here, introduce a book here in a second, and I'm going to talk about that, but I want to talk about brand because that's what I talk about, Um, but I want to start connecting it and try to bring value that you can execute right now in your day or execute right now in your business, and brand, let let me just be super clear about this. Your brand, whether it's your business brand or your personal brand or the type of person you are. It's not about you. My clarity brand is not about me. If I sell Nikes or if I'm Nike, which I'm not, but if I was, my brand is not about my company or my production model or the new fashion that I, the new looks that I'm releasing. It's not about any of that. Brand is only about your customer, your listener, your relationships, whoever's on the other side of that. If you're thinking in terms of brand, you're thinking in terms of the other people. If you're not thinking in terms of the other people, then you're not thinking about it the right way. Let me explain. Brand is a feeling, and I talk about this a lot. Brand is the feeling that other people get, other companies get, other organizations get when they interact with me in some way, whether they see an ad or they buy a product or we have a conversation or we have a DM uh, or any of that, right? Or they see a post, right? That is elicits some level of feeling. 
Sometimes it's boring, right? I see this post, I keep scrolling. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay, in that moment, the feeling isn't a great feeling. And sometimes it's like, I really connect with that. That's speaking to me right now. And when that happens, it's a good feeling. If it's a product, right? When I buy Nikes, right? I feel like I connect with the just do it community. People who are motivated, who aren't afraid to embrace the conflict, to make forward progress, who know by entering in the race, I very likely could lose, but it's still worth it, right? That's Nike's brand. That's why I connect with it. So brand is this feeling, right? So follow, bear with me here. So if you're a brand, you're about the customer. And the reason is because brand is a feeling that is elicited in the other person, in the customer, in the other side of the relationship, in the viewer of the social media. So if brand is a feeling, I take it one step further. I always use this Seth Godin definition about like what brand is and the set of feelings and expectations Right. Whenever someone interacts with or touches your brand in any way, right, that influences their buying decision or their decision to do business with one company over another. So that's Seth's dis definition. And I believe that and I, I'm a subscribe to that. Um, I take it one step further and I say brand isn't just that feeling that is actually your brand is actually a reflection. I'm going on this side of the mic. That is a reflection of how that person sees themselves. So when I buy Nikes, I buy it because I see the Just Do It community as a reflection of my internal dialogue, as a reflection of how I want to be. And so brand, if you're following, is then not about you. It's about your customer. I just had a conversation uh, yesterday with one of our clients talking about an anniversary, right? They've been in business for a long time. Right, so this is the year we're gonna talk about this anniversary. And we've been in business for this many decades. Well, our advice to them as an agency, as our agency of record, is to say, that is a really great accomplishment, that's really important, but that is about you. And that is not about your customer. Why should your customer care that you've been in business for 40 years? Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Well they get to choose whether or not they care. We're not gonna put that on and say, hey, we're the best, look at us, because it's no longer about them, it's about us. So if a brand is about your customer, it's not about you, then you can't just go around just expecting them to make a big deal over your company's anniversary. It's important, it's valuable, but it's only valuable to the customer if it's valuable to the customer. So how can we position 40th anniversary to talk about things that matter to them, like, consistency or integrity over time or community service or stability, right? And we, you start to position it in different ways. And how can we celebrate the customer through our anniversary? So that's a little bit of a business example. And so if you take away one thing today, it is that your brand is not about you, your brand and your personal brand, your business brand is about your customer. Now, I want to talk about, about a book. This book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. I have a long history with the author of this book, not a real deep personal history. I've had some personal interaction, but um, I've been reading Don's books for uh, probably 15 years. And he started out, you know, as a writer writing kind of, I don't know, kind of memoir type books about himself and his thoughts and his feelings, all that, um, which were really cool. But then now he has really taken his understanding and knowledge of story and how humans are hardwired for narrative. And he's put it into a, a product, basically. And um, I've subscribed to this type of thinking and he's finally put in a book. It's probably been, I don't know, a good five or six years, maybe more actually, since he, he started down this trail and um, it's in a book. And I've recommended this book to a lot of people that I have spoken with over the last week because here I'll show you Instagram live. This is the book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Um, we'll, we'll link this up in the podcast notes and on the site. And the reason this connects so much is because Don taps into something very primal in the human psyche, and that is just we communicate and we understand things in terms of narrative and in story. And in the beginning of the podcast, I sang the opening line of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I didn't sing the last word, how I wonder what you, right? I didn't sing the last word because it kind of drives you nuts when you don't hear the last note. Good, go ahead, sing it to yourself. 
Don't sing the last note. It drives you crazy. Why? Because the story doesn't end. The musical loop doesn't complete. It doesn't resolve. And there's something hardwired into our brains that wants to, and needs that resolve. So Donald, 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 Don put this story brand framework into a book finally. And, you know, he's has classes and things that have been very beneficial to me and have taught me a lot about how to, how to market, honestly, how to communicate. And I've deployed those things with clients in my personal life. It's in a book. So now it's easily shareable with all of you. Um, look, it's funny how, you know, you connect with someone and then you realize like they also connect with the people that you connect with. And you start to realize there's this community of people that all are kind of looking and watching the same things. And so when I read through the kind of acknowledgements and the praise for this book, I was like, oh, okay, let's, who do we have? Well, we have Seth Godin, number one. Well, we got a Seth Godin book right there. Okay. Uh, Ken Blanchard. There's Ken Blanchard. John Maxwell. I don't have, I have some of his books, but they're not on, um, I have some of his books, but they are not on the shelf. Um, Dave Ramsey. Dave's book, Entree Leadership, was one of the first business books I read early in the businesses that I've built. Um, Bill Halsam, he's the 49th governor of Tennessee. Um, I don't know if he's written any books. And uh, Michael Hyatt. Oh, I don't have a Michael Hyatt book in the shelf. I have him in the office. So all I'm saying about that, isn't it funny how the people that you start to hear this col uh, constant narrative? And so no wonder I connect a lot with this book. But let me talk a little bit about the summary of this book. We're wired to understand things as humans in the form of a narrative. And a narrative, any narrative that you see, and this gets really formulaic actually, the more you, you dive into it and you'll realize kind of like it ruins some of the movies that you've seen or a lot of them because you understand the formula of the story before it really even unfolds. And so in any good story, you have a character who wants something, right? That's what makes it interesting. No one wants to watch a story about somebody who doesn't really want anything and doesn't really care if he gets it or not. Boring. You have a character that wants something, but there's this thing called conflict. And there's something standing in the way of him getting what, him or her, getting what they want. And that conflict or that problem makes them feel a certain way. There's a problem, you know, an obvious problem. And then there's, there's the way that problem makes them feel. And that's where we start to you know, really like, oh, get into the story and empathize with the character. And that's when we dig in and it has our interest. But every story also has this concept or this person in the story of a guide. And the guide is somebody who exhibits empathy and authority with the character. So they understand why the character feels the way they did. Um, the guide probably dealt with a similar thing in their life and they have conquered it. So they have the authority to speak into the guide's life and give the, I mean, into the character's life and give the character a plan to overcome their problem. And the character engages that plan and it either ends in success or failure, comedy or tragedy. And so we see this narrative flow through a lot of movies. I use movies like Star Wars and Tommy Boy and Bridget Jones Diary and all these things that it's the same narrative. It's the same narrative with Jerry Maguire and Lord of the Rings. Same narrative. They have a character who wants something. They have a problem. They meet a guide, helps them overcome the problem, gives them a plan, engages it. Luke has Obi-Wan. Frodo has Gandalf. Katniss has Hamish. Tommy Boy has, what was his name? Richard. David Spade. Richard. Same thing. So as we're talking about these things in a narrative format, like we're hardwired for story. And as a business or as a company, we need to position ourselves not, not as the character. And that's the main point from a business standpoint of the book. You, your brand, are not the character in the story. Your brand is not about you. And that's the moment. You are the guide. And I spent a lot of time in a lot of meetings helping companies and individuals understand how and why they are the guide to the character. And in marketing terms, we look at the character and we call these personas, demographics, psychographics. 
getting into the mind of what's important to that character and then positioning ourselves as the business or the counselor or whatever it is, the coach as the guide and connecting our understanding of the character's internal struggle with our authority to help them solve it. That's the powerful connection. And as we do that, we have to tell a story in our marketing. We have to tell a story in our messaging so that the character understands that we're singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and we have to show them how I wonder what you are. We have to show them, complete the loop. And so that's kind of the nugget today when I say it's important to bring value to your customers, I want to bring something that you can use right now. And I hopefully this is something you can use right now because it's changing your mindset and your psyche and how you're approaching your communication. As we help companies walk through this process and define these things out, as we do that, it's interesting. Like you don't not only make better videos, you write better emails and text messages and it aligns your company culture around a, a unified thing unifying concept because now you're, you've defined it. You've told the story, you've written the narrative and now everyone understands it and can join or they can not join, which is also good for a company. If you're not telling the right narrative, they're not going to be a happy customer anyway. Right? So clarity, compressed community, my, my kind of efforts to connect um, with you and with companies, right? Well, I'm not the character of the story. It's not about my life. It's not about my company. It's not about my perspective, even though I talk about those things, but I talk about them in the way because I believe that you, the character in the story, the person that it's actually about, you want the same things or similar things than I, as what I want and have kind of found my way through a little bit, right? You want to be an entrepreneur that is, has some level of success. You want to be someone who is pursuing this self-awareness where you stop doing the things that kind of derail you and you concentrate and focus on the things that move you forward and the positive mindset and positive mentality. That's what I believe you want. If you're an organization or company, I believe you want to be better at marketing. I believe that there's some confusion there because you don't fully understand why half of your marketing is working and half of it isn't. And you see all these other brands getting market share and you want to get in that game or you want to jump ahead or you want to preserve and protect a great brand that you've built. I believe that that's why you watch this content. That's why you pay attention. And then I position myself as the guide who's saying, I believe the same things. We are the same. And it's not disingenuous. I want to connect with people that believe the things I do because that's where you get momentum. And then, so I have a level of empathy because I understand because I'm on the same hustle and maybe I've conquered some of those things or maybe I've made just a little bit more progress. Well, that maybe gives me the authority to talk about it. And then I give you a plan, right? Be a part of this clarity community. Reach out to the agency so we can start talking about your brand. That's step one, step two. Step three is have more clarity. That's the win. That's success. Take a little bit forward with you. Be a little bit better today. Have a little more understanding of why you make the decisions you make. Get your brand aligned with your customer. So there you go. There's the secret sauce. I gave it to you. You want to go deeper? Read that book. I'd love to talk to you about the book. I'd love to know what you think about it because frankly, it's you can tell everybody the secret sauce and Gary Vaynerchuk taught me this because he tells everybody the secret sauce and he's like I know people aren't going to do it which is why I can tell it I hope you do it I'd love to help you do it if you don't have the motivation to do it on your own or you don't have the understanding or you need to outsource or you just need an outside opinion please reach out um, this weekend or actually this is released on Tuesday so this Friday I'm going to be speaking in Amarillo Texas at GrowthCon 2019. It's going to be an awesome time. One of my uh, one of the guests we had on the, the podcast, AJ Amex, he's going to be there as a speaker as well. If you're in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Amarillo area, West Texas, it would be awesome if you stop by. Tickets are available. Um, let them know you saw it on the podcast and that's why you're there. But it's going to be an awesome day full of things like this, what I was just talking about, but in more depth, in more detail and um, with more variety because there's a variety of speakers. So I would love to see you there, meet you there if I haven't met you in person. Um, and I think that's it. Next week is week 52 of the podcast. Big week. Let's see if we can get something special together. 
And that's it. Just thank you for being a part of this community. I hope that we as a community can walk forward together. I hope that all the all the characters out there, I hope all the characters, all of you who want to move forward and want to connect, want more clarity, want to understand why you do what you do, want to understand your marketing and branding and your customers so you can connect like you never before. I hope we take some more steps together. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're watching the video version of this podcast and Let's have a week where we pursue clarity together. 51. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you... Not going to say it.